What's going on YouTube? So last year, the Honda Pilot went back to its roots with a all new and tougher looking model. But in the years since its unveiling, a lot of new rivals have entered the segment, including the Toyota Grand Highlander. So is this latest 2024 model the family king? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So let's get things started here under the hood. With the Honda Pilot, it's actually very simple. Unlike things like the Grand Highlander, we don't have turbocharging, we don't have any hybrids. We just have this 3.5 liter V6 engine, making 285 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. All models have a 10-speed automatic transmission, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and as far as fuel economy, you're sitting at 21 mpg combined with the all-wheel drive system. Now, of course, just like every full review, we will be going out for an extensive test drive later on. We're going to get things like our signature sound level reading so that we can compare to the competition, such as the Grand Highlander. But first, let's go ahead and close up the hood because we need to take a look at the exterior design. Now, one of the things that Honda did to this next generation pilot was really kind of toughen it up, bring it back to its roots, like I was saying in the introduction. And I think this has been really well received so far. So what do we have? as far as the design. Well, up in the front you have this kind of nice and boxy grille. It's going to have this nice gloss black finish as well as the chrome accent that passes along the top. If you choose one of the higher end trims, as in the EXL and above, you're also going to get the silver accent down here on your lower fascia. Now that I'm down here, I do want to mention the Trail Sport model. That, of course, is the tough, rugged, off-road capable pilot. That model is going to have an extra inch of ground clearance over this model, so 8.3 inches. It also has real metal skid plates. Now, coming back over here to more practical elements, let's talk about our headlights. Full LED headlights are standard on all models of this new generation. These are reflector LEDs. You also have your turn signal indicator and LED daytime running light. And then as we bump down to the lower fascia, you're going to find an LED fog lamp, and this is included on all but the base LX. Now as we move around to the rear design, just like with the front, things kind of got tougher and more rugged with this new generation. Yeah, it looks really good, especially here in black. Now one of the things we do here at Kark Infections is we check out the taillights to see if all three of the taillight elements are LED. So let's go ahead and do that. We do have an LED brake light portion, an incandescent reverse light, and an incandescent turn signal indicator. So one out of three elements are LED, and that's going to actually be across the board on the pilot. So not too bad, but I would like like to see a full LED tail light arrangement offered on the higher trim levels. Now as we drop down to this lower area, this is going to have a really nice look. We have some silver here in the middle. We also have faux exposed exhaust outlets here on both sides for some of your higher end trim levels. I really like the way that looks. As far as your tow rating, it's 3,500 pounds with front drive or 5,000 pounds with all wheel drive. Now, as far as your wheel options, you're going to have the choices between either 18 or 20 inch alloys. The models with 20 inch alloys are going to be the Sport, Touring, and Elite trim levels. The Touring and Elite are going to come with this nice contrast finish. So as you can see, you've got the gray and then you've got the silver accents that run through. I think it looks really nice with this overall body style. Now, I do want to just mention, of course, the Trail Sport is going to have more off-road oriented tires and suspension. But if you really want to dig in deep to the Trail Sport, we have done a video where we took it off-road. Definitely go check that out. Also, we've done a dedicated video on the LX trim level if you want to see what the base model is offering specifically. As we come up here to our mirrors, all but that base model are going to come with blind spot monitoring. The upper trim levels are also going to have power folding and driver side auto dimming. Now here at the side of the Pilot, you're going to notice that squared off boxy shape. And as far as the overall length of this vehicle, it's 199.9 inches long, which pretty much means it's bigger than everything in the segment besides the new Toyota Grand Highlander, which is still just ever so slightly bigger than this. Now, as far as other things I want to point out, I do want to point out that you have uh, chrome window surrounds on your windows as well as the roof rails up here at the top. 
Now, even for those of you who took more than a few times to pass your driver's test, the Honda Pilot's gonna keep you safe because you have all four active safety systems as standard equipment on this model, regardless of what trim level you choose. So that's certainly very nice. I like to see that Honda's including that. But guys, let's go ahead and check out the interior. But before, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's move on to the interior. First, of course, we'll take a quick look at the key fob. You do have smart entry as well as remote start on the fob, so long as you choose anything but the base LX trim level. And getting inside, super simple, just grab behind the handle, that's gonna unlock the door. Now take a look inside of the cabin. Of course, we have that new design that debuted last year. It looks tougher and boxier, just like the exterior. But the first thing I wanna talk about in regards to the interior are your seats and your color choices. So you're gonna have a wide variety of different materials that you can pick. You actually start out with cloth seats, the Trail Sport will have a synthetic leather, and then the other trim levels will come with real leather. We have the Touring today, so this is gonna be a real leather, but without the perforation that you get on the Elite trim level. And your color choices will be black or gray. The Elite has an exclusive brown option. As far as the controls, they're gonna be 10-way power adjusting on all with the base model with two-way lumbar support. And the EXL is where you'll begin to get your memory seats. But let's go ahead and climb inside. When you climb inside, you do get a little animation up there in the gauge cluster. And let's go ahead and look around at the rest of the cabin materials. So starting out with our door trim, this is gonna be covered in a leather material with a double stitching detail. That same material is gonna be in the center section. And then the top part is going to be soft touch. We have a, a piano black trim right there on the door trim. And as we go to the upper dash, again, nice soft touch plastic. We have leatherette through the center sections with the stitching detail. And then as we come down to the lower panel, uh, this is gonna be a little bit more basic. We just have a little piano black right here around the shifter. All the rest of this though is going to be very solid feeling, but hard touch. And we'll go ahead and fire it up with the push button start. Now the first thing we'll look at inside of here is our gauge cluster. What we have on most trim levels is what you see right here. This is going to be a half digital, half analog setup that you've probably seen on some other Honda products. So obviously, as you can tell, this part is the reconfigurable section. And then the other side is going to be locked in place unless you get the elite trim level. If you do that, you're gonna get a full 10 inch uh, digital gauge cluster instead. And that model will also throw in a head up display. Now, as we pull back to the steering wheel, got the latest Honda design, nice leather wrapped on all the models except the LX, and all the models will be manual tilt and telescoping. If you want steering wheel heating, you can get that, but you need to get the Trail Sport or the Elite trim level. But let's go ahead and talk about interior storage, because this, of course, is a very, very strong area for any Honda product, and we'll start out underneath this center console here. So as you can see, uh, is loaded with donuts. That's because this is our logo. And we also want to simulate how many donuts you'll need to bring along for all the occupants in the back of your Honda Pilot because they're all going to be crying for donuts. And you can fit 17 donuts inside of here. We almost ran through our two dozen maximum capacity donuts in this thing because it is absolutely enormous. You've got your two cup holders. You additionally have more storage up here with a wireless phone charging pad on EXL and above. We're not done yet though. We have the passenger side storage shelf. We have more storage in the door trims as well. This thing has absolute ton of storage and they've really done just an excellent job with maximizing storage for you and your family. Now coming over here to our shifter, typical Honda push button style. Press down D for drive. You can press again if you want to activate a manual mode and you do have paddles on the steering wheel. R is for reverse. Most models, you're gonna see this view right here. It's gonna be a traditional backup camera with active trajectory. Most trims will also have parking sensors, but if you want a 360 camera, you are gonna to have to choose the Trail Sport or the fully loaded Elite trim level. Back behind that, you have your electronic parking brake with your brake hold, and you also have your drive mode controller. Now continuing up the dashboard, we have a 
nice and simple panel of climate control. So this is the three zone automatic climate setup. Most trims will come with this. Very easy to make your adjustments with these really nice feeling clicky knobs. Inside of the same panel, you also have your controls for your three stage heated seats. Those are gonna come on all but the base LX trim level. But if you want to cool off your buns, you are gonna have to get the elite trim level. Now, moving above that, we come up here to our volume knob. So both the Touring and the Elite trim level are gonna come with the upgraded Bose sound system. So let's go ahead and give that a sample right now. So as you can probably tell, this is a really nice sounding sound system, really fills up the cabin well. And if you're into audio, I would certainly suggest, you know, thinking about upgrading to at least this trim level so you can get access to the Bose sound system. All right, now it's time to talk displays. What you're looking at right now is the nine inch display. Um, this is going to be included on your up level models. So it's gonna be the uh, EXL trim level and above. If you go lower than that though, you're gonna have this really small seven inch display. This one's certainly going to be the better way to go if you're into technology because you do have the newest Honda Link software. Inside of this, you're going to have um, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You do have access to those systems on the smaller display, but they're gonna be a wired connection only. One other thing inside of the system I want to point out is that we have the cabin talk system. So this is actually acts as like an intercom so that the people in the third row can hear you way back there. Now, rising above here, uh, we do have the auto dimming mirror with home link universal remotes on EXL and above. And then up at the top, we have a large panoramic sunroof. This is going to be included starting at the trail sport trim level. It's got a nice thick sunshade and of course the front panel does open up. Now the Pilot is a family three row, so this rear seat area is very important. Let's see how it compares to stuff like that Toyota Grand Highlander. Now, first and foremost, I wanna mention the space. 40.8 inches of leg room, 40.2 inches of headroom. It's actually still more space than the Toyota Grand Highlander. I do believe that pretty much makes this the largest three row you can get in this segment. So very impressive uh, leg room figures um, as far as how much knee room there is. I brought my ruler and I'm sitting at about seven inches of knee room. I'm 5'9 for reference. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who is five foot eight, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. Now the seats are adjustable. I can slide them forward and back a very good distance. Um, so very adjustable in that regard. You also do have the ability to recline these seats for extra comfort. Now these seats are very unique in a few different ways. So first of all, I wanna just point out, you can fold down this middle seat here. That's gonna allow you to have two cup holders, some more storage. So if you wanna put your booger collection back here, your kids can do that. But that's not all with this middle seat because if you choose a touring or elite trim level, so the top two models, you can actually have this middle seat completely removed and it is stowable in the cargo area underneath of the floor. So as you can see, I went ahead and stored this middle seat fully in the cargo floor and it can actually be completely flat. How neat is that? You can have seven passenger seating or eight passenger seating in this Honda Pilot. That's a unique feature that the vast majority of things in the segment do not offer, including that Toyota Grand Highlander. So I like the customizability when it comes to the seating configurations that the Pilot is including here. Now, let's talk about the features. Here in the center, we have uh, nice rear vents. We're also gonna have our own climate controls down below that. Uh, you will notice that we're not gonna be able to sizzle them cheeks in the touring model because that is an elite exclusive feature to have heated rear seats. We do have two USB-C ports down below that. As far as other features that might be worth noting, uh, check this out, the seat back pocket. I'm not sure if this is a new thing for 2024 or not. Uh, we had a pretty, short amount of time with the pilot but we actually have a little phone holder in the seat pocket i like that that's a really nice thoughtful touch as far as the door trim is concerned rear window sunshades come on exl trim levels and above the materials are going to be nicely done and we have a ton of storage in here two bottle holders as well as a little storage compartment behind that let's go ahead and check out the third row on the honda pilot 
Now, they have made it very easy to get back here. You just press this button right here. That's gonna electronically uh, release the seat and slide it forward out of the way. So very nice, easy third row to enter into. And then once I climb back here, wow, very comfortable third row. That's one of the reasons that a lot of you guys are buying the Honda Pilot is because this third row is so good and indeed you are right. So 32 and a half inches of leg room. Even with this seat slid all the way back and like I said I'm five foot nine I still have about two inches of spare uh, knee space and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. The thigh support is very good as well. 38 inches of headroom and that does make it larger than pretty much everything in the segment uh, including the Telluride Palisade all those models but the Toyota Grand Highlander is still going to be an inch bigger here in the third row. I will point out you have three seats back here. As far as features are concerned, we do have rear vents integrated on the uh, pillar here. We also have a USB port, two cup holders as well. So all things considered how it falls in our car confections third row rating scale, I'd say this is actually fit for adults. Now walking up to the tailgate, if you choose the Touring or Elite trim levels, you will have a kick tailgate to open it up. If you choose the EXL, it will just be power without the kick function. And let's go ahead and see how much space we have in the cargo area of this Pilot. Uh, hint, it's a lot of space. So it's going to be 19 cubic feet behind the third row seats. If we reach up and fold those down, we're going to have a capacity of 49 cubic feet behind the second row seats. And if we fold the second row down, our maximum is 87 cubic feet of cargo capacity. That pretty much best, once again, almost all of the rivals in the segment besides the Toyota Grand Highlander, which is still about 10 cubic feet larger. But let's just be honest, guys, I'm going to make a your mama joke. This is as big as your mama after eating the Thanksgiving dinner. This is a ton of space, guys. If you can't fit it, what you need for your family in here, you probably don't need it. Now, I do want to point out no handles to fold the second row in the cargo area, so I'm going to have to go up there and fold them individually. So now that I've folded all of those out, I did bring my uh, tape measure here because we like to get all those measurements for you here at Car Confection. So behind the driver's seat to the rear of the cargo area, we are sitting at 84 inches of length. And then let me get, it, get my tape measure extended back out so I can get the width of the cargo area. We are sitting at 44 inches wide. So very, very impressive uh, cargo length figures as far as underneath the floor. There is additional space up underneath the here with pretty significant amount. I mean, as you can see, it's at least another couple cubic feet as well. I also wanna point out you have this button right here that will allow you to walk away from the tailgate. Once it senses that you're away from the tailgate, it's gonna go ahead and close automatically. Well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2024 Honda Pilot. In this test drive, we're going to be talking about a lot of things that you might be curious about, as you can see on the screen right now, including getting our signature sound level reading so you can compare to see how quiet it is compared to stuff like the Grand Highlander. But first, we're going to get a hard acceleration. There's a little taste of acceleration as we went up that hill into this red light. Of course, the big thing with the Pilot is what we already mentioned in the spec dump. It's the fact that this new generation, almost surprisingly, didn't go to a turbocharged yep. four-cylinder like many or most of the competition has at this point. We have a new 3.5 liter V6 engine on board and it makes 285 horsepower, so that's a very healthy amount of power as well. Five more, as a matter of fact, over the previous generation. But the nice characteristic that remains from the previous generation is the smooth, refined, buttery yeah. feel of this V6. Yeah. I mean, that's really the thing that you're going to notice uh, first when you get behind the wheel of that is of this vehicle is just how smooth and refined it feels and sounds. It really does 
sound like you're in an Acura MDX, which is something that a lot of the competition can't say now that it's moved to a turbo four-cylinder, especially uh, the uh, Toyotas, the Highlander, and the Grand Highlander and their base configurations. It has a little bit of a loud uh, 2.4 liter turbo four-cylinder, and this is going to be a stark contrast between those two. cleared out of our way so we could accelerate a little harder there. It's also a good time for me to go ahead and talk about the transmission. So we have a 10-speed automatic transmission. This is Honda's own transmission that they've developed for their products and this is going to replace the ZF 9-speed that was in the previous generation. And I have to say that this is a lot better. It's not just that you have one more gear. That doesn't make yeah. that big of a difference. It's about the overall smoothness. That transmission had some issues in terms of the shift quality. This is going to be a lot smoother, a lot more refined, and I think it's more sure of itself as to what gear it should be in and how to give you the best acceleration. Yeah. And that was your auto start stop right there. Um, I will commend this vehicle. Uh, it does have an auto start stop system, but the uh, Restart itself is very, very smooth. I mean, you really feel no uh, bumps or anything. The only thing you can do is hear a little bit of the engine if you have no music on. So I'd imagine that if you had some music playing, you're not gonna notice that this vehicle does the auto start stop at all. Right, and you can turn it off very easily with this button right here. And as far as your fuel economy is concerned, uh, since you do have the option between front wheel drive or all wheel drive on most of the trim levels, um, it's going to be either 22 or 21 miles a gallon combined. Um, and it's worth noting that is not the best fuel economy in the segment. Um, it's not awful per se, it's just definitely not going to be as good as some of the uh, turbo four cylinder rivals and especially those rivals that have some form of hybridization like the new Grand Highlander, you're going to be getting a lot better fuel economy than this traditional V6 setup. Right, and I think this would be a good time just to go ahead and roll into our slam dunk and air ball because that today is going to be the air ball. Honda really, I think, should offer some form of a hybrid as we've been talking about Grand Highlander and regular Highlander are really this model's biggest competition and they have more than one hybrid version actually you can choose from at this point. Yeah. And as far as our slam dunk is concerned, it would just have to be this vehicle's overall practicality for the family. That's really where the Honda Pilot has shined in the past. It's where it continues to shine for this all new generation. I mean, you heard us in the interior fit 17 donuts in the center console. That's not including the storage shelf here. Uh, and we're talking, we have a ton of space in the cargo area, even the ability to put the middle seat in the cargo area and stow it completely under the floor. I mean, this thing just nails the practicality aspects. And now that we're speeding back up again, I do want to just take a second to talk about your ride quality for the Honda Pilot. Of course, that is one of a family three rows main missions is just to be comfortable for that whole family. And the Pilot nails that. Uh, we drove a lot of different versions of the Pilot. Uh, last year we did an LX, we did an Elite, we did a Trail Sport. We did pretty much all the trim levels last year. It's our first we, time in the touring though. Yeah, it is our first time in this trim level, but um, this car just nails the ride quality. It is so comfortable. The seats are incredibly soft and supportive. I have no complaints and your family is not gonna have any complaints when it comes to the ride quality either. But we're gonna speed up here to 55 miles an hour so we can get our signature sound level reading for you guys. Fifty-eight point nine decibels is our official car confections sound level reading going fifty-five miles per hour. We are in our home state of Kentucky, so this is an official sound level reading. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to our website, carconfections.com, because on carconfections.com, we've actually posted all of our sound level readings for all the cars we've reviewed, which is a lot of cars, and we can see how it compares. 
And as far as how that ranks in the segment, we have sampled out a lot of cars. Um, that is going to actually place it right in between the Honda Pilot LX we tested out and the Honda Pilot Elite we tested out. Um, so very consistent sound level reading. Um, that is going to be on the louder end for the segment though. And I will say just sitting here, um, listening with my own ears, I do hear more road noise than I would in some of the other rivals. So that's something to consider uh, with this Honda Pilot. And the last thing I want to talk about here is your warranty. It's going to be a three-year, 36,000 miles for your basic warranty, five-year, 60,000 miles for your powertrain. Additionally, Honda is adding, or has added the two years and 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance uh, just last year. So that's certainly a nice benefit that you're getting now. Now for the 2024 model year, prices are only gonna rise about $500 on each respective trim level. So when you have a touring model like what we have today, so we have the all wheel drive touring, uh, we're gonna be sitting at $49,000 as a starting point for this trim level. 1375 for our destination, 50,375 as tested today. Now of course the Elite is going to be a little bit more expensive than that. That's gonna be about 52,500 bucks this year. Now, if you're a smart shopper and want to get the best deal, the next place you're going to go to is carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now on our website, we have a tool that will allow you to get the best price from local dealers in your area, as well as access to invoice pricing information. If you'd like to take advantage of that, we have a link in our video description. Well guys, that's going to be all for our in-depth review of the 2024 Honda Pilot Touring. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. We want to welcome you into this Car Confections family because we review a lot of cars that I'm sure you won't want to miss out on, and we also have a lot of fun, so we want to welcome you into that. If you're already part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.